Hey everyone, my name is Diamond Rivera, and we are back at it with the Let's Discuss with Diamond podcast. Already is 2023. I mean, everyone's 2022 has just been uh, just a mumble jumble of just amazingness, performances, everything in between. But we're starting 2023 off amazing. And over here, I have one and only my special guest, the one and only Selena Tornez. Hi, everybody. <laughs> oh, my God, Selena, Selena. I mean, honestly, before we even get started, um, one thing I have to say is, as we've talked as well privately, like your career over these years, um, from the performances and workshops, um, from the, the films you've been able to create over these past years, the collaborations with artists, like the first thing I do, I got to give you a clap because like, seriously, you've been like busting your ass has these past few years so we got to give some <laughs> some love to you here um but my first question selena is how have you been like how are you as a human being as a person how has really this past year been for you oh a lot <laughs> a lot <laughs> has happened um i think i will really never forget this past couple years Mm -hmm. um of my life it was like a whole like what a little, little change <laughs> of my life mm -hmm. <laughs> and it like really opened my eyes and seeing life a little bit differently and just a little bit of more um realizing things and just growing and learning from just lessons life lessons so selena um it's really interesting as we talk about with social media many people talking about needing that break needing kind of that reboost and that restart but interesting enough i i found out about you through social media through many artists that we find out but it's also interesting your upbringing your story um realizing kind of you started out in new york and were raised in mexico but, you know, for me, it's hard for me to tell your story. I think it's better for you. So kind of give myself and the audience an understanding of who you are before the performances, before it all. Mm, yeah. And also going back to the social media break, it feels great. It honestly feels great. But because of what we do as artists, it's really hard to not be... Um, on it all the time because it's work at the end of the day that's how i want to um just see it see it so i really took this like cleansing week so i can just like get back on it and just focus on posting my work and continue with my life rather than automatically always going back to it and everything else that comes with social media we know mm -hmm. so it's definitely been super refreshing um and now going into who I was before this um, dancing experience that became my lifestyle. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, I used to be an athlete in school. When I started dancing, like for real, for real, like focusing on it, I was 15 years old. Mm. But before that, I used to really love playing um, soccer and I would, play for my school all the time. Basketball, I was good, but I feel like I was a little too rough. Oh, okay, okay, I, <laughs> I like that. I would be like, okay, you out. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, but what did I do? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it was like moments like that, but because I guess I was just so used to um, playing soccer that, you know, like soccer is a little bit more rough. Um, but yeah, I really love that. I love swimming as well. There was a point where um my teacher wanted me in competition with the school but mm. you know due to um <clears throat> not being able to to be in school and be for swimming there wasn't enough money in my family for them to like let me compete so it just it was just part of like a hobby kind of thing after school um but then that's when the dancing started at the age of 15 Mm. That that's interesting because many people that I've talked to, especially the artists that me and you have seen over the years or befriended, a lot of people I hear is the story of I started when I was super young and then kind of gradually went from there. But to hear like your journey 
as they sometimes say, the late bloomer, you're kind of older starting. It's awesome. But then realizing like your athletic background, you mm -hmm. know, I'm a big soccer fan. I love basketball, but um, hearing like you really, you, you had kind of that, you had that athletic, athletic side to you before going into dance. Um, that yeah. it, it definitely shows. Like I feel that edge when I'm watching you perform <laughs> and I'm like, She's got a little competition in it, and I love it because, listen, man, like, at that, as we talk, getting on stage, that responsibility you have, it's, it's, it means something. So you then getting into dance at the age of 15, was it kind of like an easy transition, or was it kind of like tough? Um, it was easy. I mean, it was interesting because... My mom always wanted me to dance. She, her dream was to be a dancer. Um, and when I used to go to school, they used to have small, you know, dance presentations. And at uh, the school that I used to go, that it was my um, summer English classes. When I was really small, at the age of like four years old, um, I was um, in this program with the Hawaiian um, group. So I actually got to perform for the first time on a stage in my Hawaiian little outfit. <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah. That was, you know, like something small. So I guess, you know, those little things, I don't really count them, but mm -hmm. it is part of uh, who, you know, who I grew to be. So every time we would have like dance programs in the school, I would be really excited because I really liked them. And my mom too, like she just loved seeing me dance, but I really loved more sports. And she mm. tried a couple of times to put me in salsa classes, but I will I will always complain because um in my hometown I will only see people my parents' age taking the class. Mm. So I'd be like, No, nah, I don't wanna dance that I wanna go up there, I wanna do ballet, like I wanna do other things if you put me in dance. Yeah. But you know, years passed and then in Mexico, well, as Latinos we celebrate uh, the quinceañeras. See. And it was this question that I was like, I was thinking about it today. I'm like, I made the right decision. My mom asked me if I wanted to have a party, a, a great like mm -hmm. quinceañera celebration, or if I wanted to register in this amazing gym that had like everything for a year. And I said, I want the gym. <laughs> Mm, okay. I said I don't want the party. I want the gym. I don't want to be in no dress. Like you, I used to not be girly like at all. Like mm. I grew up with my three brothers, so I used to be like yeah, fighting. Boy. <laughs> yeah, like <laughs> so. I was like, no, I want the sports. I want all of that. I want the swimming. I want the gymnastics. I want everything. They had everything, and it also had dance. It had salsa. It had jazz, ballet, cheerleading. It had so many mm. options. So when I entered this gym, I started experiencing more dance with um, students that were my age or closer to my age. So I felt more comfortable to go into a salsa class, for example. Mm. But in reality, I started there with cheerleading. And I remember my coach, his name is um, Randy Medina. and. Mm -hmm. It was my first class there in dance, and they were practicing pirouettes. And I yes. was like, I don't know what that is, but okay. And then he said, okay, one by one. So I was just like looking and, you know, like practicing and trying. And I guess because of all the sports that I did growing up as well, mm -hmm. it wasn't as hard to like trying to like understand the choreography. And I found my balance and I did two and a half pirouettes on a one faucet, right? And he was like, you telling me that you've never danced before? And I'm like, no, I play soccer. <laughs> <laughs> and he was like, what? Oh my God. Me voy a hacer rico. I remember when he said that. And I'm like, and I'm like, okay. I just didn't understand his excitement. But now that yeah. I grew up and I'm instructed myself, I see that and I'm like, oh, okay. I guess I had like a sort of, you know, talent for it without even knowing. Um, and that's how I started. I started from cheerleading and I, I 
joined uh, his team that was mm-hmm. to represent um, Alcones Tech Millennial back then. And then I went into ballet and jazz class. My teachers, I remember it was Brenda Prieto and Edna Carvalho that I'm so grateful for them because she made me super flexible, Brenda. And I remember being like, oh my God, this is so painful. I remember even crying. I was so young, but I was like, <laughs> my friend is doing it, so I'm going to do it. You know, like yeah. <laughs> I had like that healthy competition. And I was like, I'm going to get the split. I'm going to get the split. But I was not flexible at all. And then from there, I met Jose de Jesus, that was the salsa instructor in, in that mm-hmm. gym. And then he was like amazed that I was getting all the steps. And it was salsa on one. And um, mm. yeah, and then from there, he invited me to uh, his dance team that was in another place. And I, I spoke to my mom and I asked her and she was like, Okay, let's try it. Well, she was in love because she wanted me to leave soccer and play and actually dance. Wow. So it got to a point where my coach was like, you're going to have to choose if you want to do soccer or if you want to dance because we are about to compete and I can't deal with you being injured because of soccer. Because sometimes I would get injured. And I was like, okay. Well, dance has more options <laughs> and more rhythms. And I actually enjoy it. So I chose dance. And I left soccer. I had to. Um, and at the same time, from that year was 2010 to 2013. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Ears. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> See, they're like. <laughs> oh. <laughs> from, <laughs> from 2010 to 2013, that was like my training. Of, yeah. I was in cheerleading and I was on um, ballet and jazz presentations at the theater. And I also joined a hip hop competition team with um his name of my coach is get it draw Alex. Mm-hmm. um and i was doing um salsa as well so yeah i got to do like three different salsa companies where i was from in mexico that was amore salsa um mm-hmm. then i i danced with the director of what was it? Ritmos y Sones, David mm-hmm. Tio, and another one, Ritmo, with Oscar Gonzalez, that they were the directors of the team, and, and I got to um, partner up with them and, and perform with them down there and compete, even. I got, I remember with Oscar in, like, 2013, I believe we won mm-hmm. first place, and that was my first time competing, just so I could, like, you know, try it in this like new partnership at the time yeah. and, but in reality I was really fresh in the scene like I was just at that time I was just like what a year and a half maybe since I had started and I was already over here competing and stuff so yeah <laughs> that was just like the beginning of it um, oh my god was, yeah down there in Mexico oh and I also joined a lady team and that's where I did my on two training gotcha. um, with Sandy Garzon. Sandy Garzon was part of a team called Ritmo y Sabor from Oaxaca. Mm-hmm. And they yes, actually won a championship. Yeah, and um, the World Salsa Championship back then. I don't know. I think it was in Florida. Yeah, back then Florida. it was that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It yes. was that, that competition. And they had the first place. They won the first place. And I was just like, wow, like, she's so amazing. Like, I was like, oh, my God, Sandy, I want to learn from you. So I was, like, really, really excited to learn from her because she used to travel also to New York and go mm-hmm. back to where I was living at, that it was um, Cuernavaca, uh, right next to Mexico City. It's, like, mm-hmm. an hour from Mexico City. But, yeah, so I in Mexico, I used to, like, go to all the congresses since I started dancing. I wanted to, like, social dance. I wanted to learn from like the best so i would see back then at eurozone or at fusion yes. Torres, i saw and learned from rodrigo y selene um david y paulina Karen mm-hmm. so i got to see <clears throat> ernesto lopez y marita luis y lorena like i took privates with a lot of also um couples in the scene in mexico mm. too so i was really like trying to learn everything <laughs> And I, I also, I'm, yeah. <laughs> that I mean, I, I, it's it's crazy because like one and one thing that hit me was what you said was you said a year and a half, 
when I'm talking to people that train three, five plus years to even have the confidence to compete, let alone just yeah. go on a regular stage and perform to actually compete. And what's also interesting is we talked is when many people hear Mexico, you hear Oaxaca, you hear CDMX, you hear Tijuana, mm -hmm. um, and, and the list goes on. But realizing you actually come, like you said, from a small city in Mexico. And what, what part of Mexico is that from? It's Cuernavaca, Morelos. Mm, and for yeah. you in that community, do you feel like it had many like inspirations as in dancers? Are there many dancers that have come from that part of Mexico that have kind of branched out like yourself? Yes, and some actually came, um, moved to like Oaxaca and other mm -hmm. states in Mexico that, you know, that there was, I would say, more opportunity for yes. dancers. So in my opinion, if I would have not went, came to New York, I think I would have went to Oaxaca. Mm, okay. But and is, is that mainly like when, when that happens, because I've heard of many artists, especially like who come from a smaller part of town in a, in a huge uh, place like Mexico, and they have to really kind of go to like the central cities. Is for, for you though, was was all of that traveling and kind of moving around and training, do you feel like it really of course it helped, but do you feel like it kind of also drained you and was it was it a lot of stress involved or for you you kind of had that goal and just kept going? Back in Mexico, I think I was just well, my mom always encouraged me a lot. But it was mm -hmm. definitely on me that I really wanted it because she even was like, if you don't get good grades, you're not going to dance. If you don't get good grades, you're not going to compete. It, like everything, I'm taking it all. And I would be like, oh, no, 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 no. So I was like mm -hmm. the best. Yeah, and absolutely. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, I mean, you, yeah. you, you listen, mama don't play. And at right. the end of the day, you want to have your fun. You want to do that. But education comes first because... Mm -hmm. I've met many people from all over the world, people that come from all over the world, especially to train in New York specifically, and realizing like the, the, the parental aspect is so influential because a lot of times people like yourself who move to another city, let alone another country, I mean, the support systems, if you don't have that support system where you're moving to a lot of times you're still relying on your parents to you know mm. really be that emotional crutch and that support because right. you know it, it's not easy but for you then when could, do you ever was there like a moment for you like of course you started you're learning dance throughout the years from 15 and on that you like told yourself or you realized like oh i got this like I'm, everything is clicking. Was there ever like a moment for you, like during a rehearsal or like a performance, that you felt like everything is clicking? <clears throat> yeah, um, I think when I started dancing and why I wanted to dance was because I felt like I I really enjoyed it, and the thing is that I learned choreography is really fast, so. To me, that was just like fascinating to see how like my brain would like actually catch up into all these like different styles and choreography. So for me, it was something that I really, really enjoyed. And the fact that I had the opportunity to do something like this that also required money from my parents and mm -hmm. seeing that, you know, I have three older brothers that they didn't have the opportunity to have something like that or to be able to pursue um, an art form that they enjoyed because, you know, we just didn't really have the money. Like my family mm -hmm. didn't have the money to be able to give that to everyone. So yeah. I'm the youngest one. And at the time, um, we were doing better. So I was able to have those opportunities. And and I knew that. And I appreciated that. And, and I will forever be grateful. <laughs> that I had that opportunity and I just didn't want to waste it at all because I felt like I could I was carrying everybody you know uh, I get so it I, I felt I, like, I, right so I felt like if I played with the time and 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 obviously money that my mom was investing for me like it it's just not it just didn't feel right 
So, hey, I mean, I, I appreciate that because I've, I've heard that I've heard that I've had those conversations with artists, especially who come from other countries and cities, a lot, let alone like you know that sometimes you have that pressure of like I'm coming here and I have this opportunity, and like you said, you can't waste it because you don't know if that opportunity may come again. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's interesting enough. You also talked about. Um, some of your, you know, your favorite teachers and people you took privates from. I think one of your favorite uh, couples is um, Karini y Rafael. Uh, sí, también. Yes, yes, definitely. Them, um, Karen y Ricardo, David y mm-hmm. Paulina, um, Adrián y Anita. The discipline. The discipline. Yes. <laughs> I mean, listen, when I tell people to like, of course you can go and do your solo work, which is one thing, but when you're dancing with another person, a lead and in, in particular, and realizing like both of you have to have that synergy. Both mm-hmm. of you have to be on point because I've seen those performances, people doing tricks and lifts and turns and yeah. for two or three minutes, you gotta like keep that up you got to keep the pace you got to you know you got to make sure everything goes according because all it takes <laughs> is one right. trip one fall one misstep one less count and everything changes so for you then you know when um how did the eventual move then back to the states happen so um i was in Sandy Garzon, Sandy Garzon's um, ladies team, mm-hmm. the Latinas was the name. And we even got to perform this at Eurostone as well. Maybe that was 20. Yeah, it had to be like the beginning of 2013. And then she offered a flight to New York because she was like, I won't be able to go. Anybody is interested mm-hmm. for the girls. And I was like, <laughs> I'm interested. Let me talk to my mama real quick. Yeah. And um, I spoke to my mom. I was like, you know, like I'm really curious about you know New York City, and I've always, I was always this little girl that was a fan in every Congress. It was like, can I get a picture of <laughs> <I was> this <laughs> artist? <laughs> And you know my mom right behind, like yeah, yeah, yeah. Dude, the players right here get an autograph too. So I'm like, oh my god, yes. Yeah. So I will be that little like excitement of like this. I just want to get to know their world, you know, because mm-hmm. I I admire so many dancers from here. Um, yeah. and the fact that I was born here also was like I I want to know you know that world because mm. I don't remember it. I was three years old when my family gotcha. decided to to move back to Mexico. So I grew up there and once i was 18 and i finished my career no sorry and i finished school i wanted to go into physical um physical Physical therapy therapy. yes Yes, physical therapy and i started i remember i i applied to schools and once i started that happened with the team and she offered the flight and Mm. i was just not feeling the school i was just like i just want to like i want to dance but i I want to I want to do more like I wanted to explore more outside of my hometown because I felt like I had already explored with different schools already and taken privates here and there so mm-hmm. I knew that even if I go to Oaxaca I could have still trained and gotten better but since I had that option to come to New York and me being born here I was like I, I need to go like I need to like take advantage of that you know mm-hmm. so I decided to come to New York. It was really hard to leave home. I was like super young and I was always like really dependent from my parents. Yeah. Um, even like going out to socials, I was there with my mom, obviously because I was too young also to be like in clubs and stuff at socials. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so it was really scary and I moved to New York. That plan was to move for six months, but I ended up staying for a year. And and that's when in 2013 I went to the New York Congress and I saw mm. all of these dope performances. Um, yeah, and I met um, the Sapphire crew there. 
Mm-hmm. And Carlos invited me to the studio to check it out. And that was like the first dance school that I went to check out in New York, like mm-hmm. in the South System. Um, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my God, it's all the I, memories coming back. I can, I can see the flashbacks <laughs> already. I mean, and, like, and listen, I mean, many people who don't even know, like, I think. When I go to events nowadays and I talk to people about even times like 2013, many people don't even weren't even there. Many people don't even realize. I mean, especially New York Congress and people coming from all over the world, especially the New York Congress. I mean, I'm seeing people all the way from Germany, Korea, Japan, Russia at one point coming all the way to this Congress. And like you said, um, it's it's that story I hear people who come here for a short term. And it turns into a long term. Yeah. And then, um, like you said, you were able to meet Carlos Zafai and the Zafai Dance Company. And But I think, too, I think when I tell people is sometimes, like, these opportunities just fall right into your lap at the right time. Mm-hmm. Because anyone else could can be in that same situation but not capitalize on that. Because, you know, you never know. You can go into the studio, may not, may not always have the best experience. But like you said, you went into the studio and, and it just, I guess, it fit. It fit well for you. So for my question then is, you know, going into that space, what was it like? You know, you being um, a young lady from a small town in Mexico, training, making your way to New York, going in your Congress and now eventually working. With Zafire. Yes. Um, well, I remember my first time going to the studio. Mm-hmm. I got lost on the train. <laughs> is it? Is this one that was in Kingsbridge? <laughs> um, I think it was right by, um, in the Bronx by Parkchester. Oh yes, I remember that. Yes, okay, I remember. Yeah. Oh my God, yeah. If you're if you're not from the Bronx, you're gonna get lost real quick. <laughs> it was so bad. It was so bad. I was I, like, I don't know how. Like, but you know, with time, I started learning and getting used to it. But the first days, weeks, months. Oh my God, I was a mess. I was a mess. And it was really hard to understand. People were like, but it's just uptown, downtown. And I'm like, no, it's not true. No, That's not true. It's not. <laughs> Especially when you get to, because Manhattan streets are totally different from the Bronx. But exactly. it's interesting. So my question, you it's in, and then you even talk about you going to the Bronx, but was it a culture shock for you coming from Mexico? Of course, you're, you're originally from New York, but you moved at the age of three back home, back to Mexico. Then you're coming back to New York. Did you get that initial like culture shock? Like, whoa, yes. this is all hitting. Okay. How was that? Yes. I've always, I've... <laughs> I was so like scared and at the same time, like fascinated by it. And then, mm-hmm. you know, like I used to really like just maybe twice a week cry on the train station or just exit in uh-huh. the train station because I would just get so like mad at myself because sometimes I would lose my metro card. Sometimes uh, it affected me seeing people like being rude and, and mean and the reality of New York, you know, <laughs> like, yeah, like uptown New York City, like the Bronx, like it, it's not like, you know, like in the movies or in like TV shows, it's really like not like this is New York and it's tough. It's tough. And I was, it was not easy. It was not easy, but now I'm a whole New Yorker. I just be walking real quick. I'm like, Oh, why are you walking so slow? Like I (laughs) put my headphones, like now I'm like, okay, this is how it is. But after years, but yeah, that first year was tough. Um, but I loved it at the same time. Mm -hmm. I loved it. It's like, yes, it could be this, but then it's also this, like it's really beautiful, the views, yeah. the talent, the history in every street. Like it's just amazing to be able to be part of it and get to know that world. And mm. going into um Sapphire also it was so hard for me to even understand the Spanish <laughs> of the mini oh culture. <laughs> Carlos, I love you. I love you with a passion. But some the Spanish, it just is rapid. It's like it's it, hitting, it's hitting. And 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 I thought Mexican Spanish was fast. No. 
Yeah. Dominican Spanish is on a whole. Now, but we know what it is also interesting is that I love so much about Sapphire is the energy, like the mm. people. It's it's authentic, like you said in the Bronx. It's it's raw. It's authentic, and but also they know how to party. They know yeah. how to ha- how to have a good time. But for you, then you know, working with Sapphire, what was that first performance like? The first performance. Well, I started with Sapphire. The moment when I walked in, I remember I was still training and learning my on two dancing because I was on on one dancing longer than on two. And on two had just got into my hometown. Like, we really didn't do on two. Mm -hmm. So when I got to New York and I saw the on two being super quick because I had the wrong idea of it. I thought on two was, like, slower than on one at the time. That's what I thought because I was like, oh, on one is, like super um like energetic and like big movements and like a lot of tricks and the on two dancers that i would see down there Mm -hmm. it was more calm and more like mambo style like it was just different so i had the wrong idea of it so when i got to new york and i and i learned a pattern i forgot what was the i think it was fuego I don't remember the the piece, but it had a lot of spins, a lot of spins, a lot of spins, a lot of spins, spins, you know. So I was just like, oh, I love this, but it's hard. Like, I I wasn't (laughs) able to, like, I was not able to understand because my body was not familiar with it at all. And Mm -hmm. the technique that I learned in Mexico, most of the dances are really flowy. Yes, and really, Um, a really soft lead. So... When I entered Sapphire and I felt that lead, I was like, oh, I better put my attention. <laughs> I'm going to fly out of here because I need to be grounded and put my, you know, resistance right there, like, ready. Because mm-hmm. I felt that. I felt that. And with Alex, Alexi, I was like, I was like, wow, he is a strong man. <laughs> <laughs> hey, listen, the, the, the routines that Zafi has created over the years are just memorable. But one thing I can say, it's fast. And yes. you got to keep up. You, like, cause, like I said, I all, it. It, all it takes is um, a one little mess up. And yeah. you got to find your way back to where you got to go. Right. But I love the energy, though. The energy yes. that they be having on stage. I was just so amazed by it. And I was like, wow, look at that confidence. And that energy mm-hmm. and that flavor, you know. So I was really amazed, and I he he said to, to come through and then to stay um, training with the semi pro. So I trained with the semi pro, and I remember performing for the first time with Danny Camacho. Mm-hmm. Um, and we were at dance court. I think it was yes, LCL. Yes, yes, it, it was. Yeah. I remember seeing you because I, I love Danny right now. He's in New Orleans. But uh-huh. I definitely love and miss Danny. I do remember oh, you. Me too. Was that with the red hair? I think yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I already had yep. red hair. Yeah. You you were definitely blind. noticeable. You I was like, okay, oh. she, <laughs> with the red hair. <laughs> hey, it was a statement <laughs> and you was that fire, the heat, the fire. I mean Yeah. It was like everything like right on time, how you said. <laughs> mm-hmm. Wait, wait, was was the person next to was it Marlene? That you were performing uh, with? I think it, yeah, I think it was, it was three couples. Marlene, mm-hmm. Raisa, me. Yes, Raisa, yes. Yeah. Yes, yeah. I, I remember that. I remember that. Uh, see, my, my, my elephant memory is yeah. there. And who doesn't miss dance sport with all the different state, all the different uh, rooms and the back. Everybody knows yeah. in dance sport the the famous backstage where you find everybody, all the conversations, you're getting your makeup done, you're, you're talking yeah. with people. I mean, hey, uh, th- there's definitely some um, amazing conversations I've had with people. So performing with Zafi, going from you just literally coming in, just learning about it, to actually being on stage with these people, what was that feeling like? I was like, <laughs> <laughs> but but also like emotionally, I was like, I was really, really, really. I found myself really emotional because I felt alone, even though I was mm-hmm. around people, but I didn't know anybody, and I was so used to being with my people. You know, like Absolutely. everybody would like yell my name and like 
you know, I'm on stage, I'm being, I'm with my friends, but at the time, I was really terrible at even doing my makeup. Somebody had to do the makeup for me. Um, I didn't really know anybody. I didn't have any friends yet. It, I was still too fresh. Obviously, Safir made me feel like it was my new family as mm-hmm. a, a team. But performing wise, like I felt different because I was not home. So all I could think is like they're they're watching me in the camera. To perform for the camera, you know, mm. so I couldn't like feel. I I couldn't feel like that darkness taking over. Like I needed to shine, so I was like, I'm just gonna do it, you know, because I know they're gonna be watching. Maybe not mm. right now, but later. So that definitely happened in like a couple of performances that I had, that I was really excited to be at, but at the same time, it just felt different, and I was still young, so. Yeah, but that first performance it was a uh, uh, pirulero, pirulero, pirulero. Mm-hmm. Yes, yep. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that. I remember. It was yeah. a fun choreo. <laughs> hey, and so and then realizing too over the years, even since Sapphire, you've been a part of some amazing collaborations, and there's it, so many to get into. We really is so much, but really for you, kind of summarizing, what have been some highlights of yours from? Working with Zafire till now, what are kind of some of those routines you've done over the years with people that always like when you think about it, it just like it makes you smile, it makes you happy. Since then, oh my god, um, well, I I will do it in order mm-hmm. from Sapphire. My highlight was performing as two couples in Panama. Mm. Um, and yeah, I believe that was my, was that my first gig as a pro? I think, I believe that was my first gig as a professional dancer in the company. And I was mm. already like teaching as well on the side. Um, but yeah, that was my first gig with the pro. So it's definitely something that was special. And I would say after that, I was also with, hmm, I guess, my debut as a duo in New York City with Jacob. Mm -hmm. That was right after the very first time. It was tough. It was tough, but it was once a special one. Mm -hmm. And I would say with Dalia Madera, with Suberi. The yes. very first routine with the blue outfit. Yes, um, I remember that yeah. one. Yeah, that was a great one too because I had Natasha there, Delia, mm. Mel. It was great. It was great. Um, that is that's definitely a highlight too. Um, with La Fuerza with Fausto. Yes, I was able to go back to Eurozone after performing there with my my people in Mexico with the yeah. Latinas. After performing there, three years later, I was able to get back, but now mm. as a Fuerza dancer. But as a <laughs> professional. Batata. Yes. Like as, yes. A, as a legit professional, because I think yes. also in, in Eurosong, there is a, there are the like pro um, divisions and then amateur divisions. Am I correct? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Gotcha. So I mean, like you said, kind of a full circle moment going from like right. Yeah, so this time I was I, I was actually able to be there as an artist, as an international mm. artist. So I was like, wow, like that was a whole highlight too. And my mom was there. That was in Puebla, so she she traveled from Cuernavaca to Puebla just to go see me perform. And that was the first time of her seeing me with New York City dancers. And I think that was mm. the only time that she got to really in person because everything wow. else she sees it through a video only but that was really special because she was there in the crowd so mm, it was really that, I mean, really yeah it's, it's and i mean hey and and i give that up too because i i've had those conversations with artists especially when their family is not immediately there it it, mm-hmm. it feels it's totally different when like you said you're performing for your family that at that moment they'll be able to see it on video, but it hits yeah. so much different when that support system is there in front of you watching. 
Mm-hmm. And like you said, um, I, I think it's special because when you said earlier in the beginning of our conversation, how it really was your mom's dream for her, I'm assuming, to be a dancer. Yeah. And then it kind of gravitated towards, I think my daughter has what it takes. But it also, I, I really have to commend you because you ultimately chose this. Yeah, this wasn't she definitely, like you were, yeah. Mm-hmm, definitely. She definitely gave me the option to choose because when she saw that I didn't want to, she was like, okay, fine. Yeah. So she gave me the space for me to go back to it when I wanted to. Yes, because yeah. listen, I, I've seen the dance moms. I've seen the ones that like, oh, I can't do it. I'm making sure my child does it. And wow. it works only one or two ways. Either the child will yeah. understand and they grow a passion for it or the child will resent it completely and do something mm. completely different. But for me, um, my first introduction, you know, like uh, like we've talked, was that fire. <clears throat> Was you working with Zapphire um, and then working with Lafuesa, of course, and Jacob? Um, mm-hmm. And then over the years, just different projects you've been a part of. And it's even more special is that in 20, I would say now 2022, um, one thing I, I loved watching now was you stepping into that solo that kind of, you know, and don't be wrong, I've seen as well, you've done collaborations and now you're also working with a new artist that we'll get into. But mm-hmm. something I have to commend you on is now you taking your talents and now um, doing solo work because I've told many artists pri- privately and publicly, it's like, there's one thing of working with a team because you do have something to fall back on. If something goes wrong and some haywire, because I've seen it when, when things happen, people are like, okay, I can look at this person and just keep going. But mm. when you're doing it solo, that responsibility on stage for how long you're on it is different. Like you ultimately are there to gravitate and capture the attention span of the audience, which I sometimes can be like, and we know in New York, New York is rough. And I've told many people for me performing, <laughs> for me filming, for me being an attendee and watching, New York is a eat you and spit you out type of world that, and, and I tell people this in the nicest way, like when people are performing, you are not, do not expect a standing ovation mm-hmm. all the time. And mm-hmm. it's in the most humbling way possible because I think as you see, and you have been through this journey, you came all the way from another country here to do this. And so I can see when you're performing, like you're giving your all. But my question to you is then, how did it feel taking that step of saying, I want to now perform by myself and create routines that I love and I'm passionate about? It felt like it was the right time to do so Mm. because I felt like recently I've been feeling maybe for the past couple of years after this long career that I've had with dance, I was able to, after exploring so many styles and so many different methods, um, I was able to find myself more comfortable with my own movement Mm. and my own vision as well. I feel like I've always had this choreographic mind since I was since I started dancing because I even did a solo. I'm I choreographed a solo for myself to compete when I didn't have experience at all. Like I was it was one or two years of me dancing salsa and I made it to the third place in my hometown with my choreography, with my own choreography. I did it, I showed it to my director and then I just did it, you know? And I see it and I'm like, oh my God, I wanna cover my eyes because I look crazy. (laughs) I'm like, how did I get third place? Like that is, that is just crazy. But Mm -hmm. I always wanted to get back to being a solo, um, to to making a solo. But, you know, I was training, I was with teams, I I was with a dance partner, so, I didn't really feel like I had the time or I want, or it was just in my plans in, mm-hmm. in those times. So I felt like after the pandemic, um, I was more open to work on myself as an mm. artist. 
rather than put all my time and effort for a team or for a partnership because mm -hmm. of everything that I lived and all, you know, the experiences that I've had. I just know that it's just better to feel secure with my art and work mm. on myself so I can be able to even work better with other people. So now that's like one of my goals to work on myself, to keep working on choreographies as a soloist and open to collaborations to work with different, different artists as well. But mm -hmm. because I'm going to, I'm focused on myself, I feel like it makes it easier for me to connect with other people. You know what mm. I mean? Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, I, I've seen your performances. I've been able to film one of them. What was that? The Fusion Experience Social. Yeah. Um, I think that was December fourth. Yeah, I'm, I'm. My memory is pretty good. But when yeah. I saw it, I was like, "Thank you." I was like, "This is what I needed." Because from the costume, from the footwork, and I'm like, the musicality. I'm like, "Thank you," because like. I also have to say, us having this conversation, technically, it's your 10-year anniversary since coming to New York Congress in 2013, <laughs> and now it's 2023, 10 years later, and, you know, listen, That's we realize, true. We realize oh too, is that, like, in 10 years, not many people can sustain sometimes a career like this, because, again, life hits. There's always something that may come about. And you may have to like deviate from your plan and, you know, figure life out. But yeah. yourself, you're able to balance life and balance dance. And it's a beautiful yeah. thing. Um, so that's thank you again. I mean, like, hey, I was like, wait, 2013 is 2023 is 10 years yeah. later. So listen, thank wow. like, you're, you're fucking awesome. And we can curse wow. on here because it's my platform and I don't care. <laughs> Um, yes. <laughs> but now we really have to get into before we get into one of our last segments called the randoms um is something i really love was and is your collaboration and your partnership with hunter um mm -hmm. I, I love hunter's work over the years but when i saw uh, the visual recently uh with you and him uh titled hot nights i was like Man, this is special. Um, because one thing too, and I've, I've told many artists this. Sometimes I could care less what you do down here. Everything here means more to me, because nothing is worse than for me watching a performance and no facial expression. Mm. When it's like, do you want to be here? Do you enjoy what you're doing, or is this just I get in and I get out? Because I understand too some artists that when it's a job. It's like, all right, I got to come, I got to leave, and just keep it moving. And the the work that you and Hunter have been doing has been amazing. So I actually want to give a, I want to show a quick, uh, I actually want to show the, the full visual to that. And then right after that, Yay. we're going to get into our last segment called The Random. So everyone, enjoy this. After this, we're getting into our last segment. See you soon. Hot nights. City life. When your work day is done, have some summer fun. Come along for the dance and the wild romance. You'll never get tired if you give us some fire. When your heart yearns and your passions burn for your one soul mate, Toma, she's yours to take.
fire So full of desire And it feels so right Toma! Yeah Come along for the dance And the wild romance Man, I, I absolutely love that routine. Um, that was special. I mean, listen, you you not only gave me a show, you gave that crowd over there to the right a show, even <laughs> while maneuvering with the photographer right to the left for you. And I was like, oh, yes. man. And, and you guys and, were, uh-huh. Yes. And that, that video is funny because his uncle is the one that produced the, the song. So he was looking oh. for somebody to um, make a video, you know, a music video yeah. of dancers. So, you know, Hunter, uncle. So he contacted me. He was like, oh, are you down to do this video? So I thought it was just going to be a little section. But then he was like, oh, no, we're doing the whole thing. And I was like, oh, wait, what? <laughs> and I'm like, oh, okay. So I guess we are <laughs> choreographing on the spot. So everything was basically wow. on the spot. And, you know, Jorge was there. Thank you so much for his patience. So it was like, it took some time to record that video. But it came out great. No, I, I absolutely loved it. I mean, listen, um, especially even the scenery and, and the musicality alone, because it's not easy trying to choreograph something. You're dealing with the elements, but hey, you guys yeah. did it. Um, and, and again, yeah. thank you for that amazing, amazing piece, you and Hunter. And, and, and also, too, what I have to say is just kind of getting a glimpse really into your life from kind of the, the early beginnings to now. Is really special to hear because a lot of times, uh, as we've even talked as well, privately realizing us as artists, sometimes our stories, our journey gets lost in the art. Yeah. Like we're performing or doing what we need to do. And many times people don't have no idea unless they have a conversation with us who we are as people. And I think, mm -hmm. again, the platform that I have, my goal is, uh, again, to shed light on artists like you, not just for your artistry, but for you as being a human being. Because... Um, one thing I sense in the word I use um, with people like yourself is genuine. When you talked about earlier as well, you feeling empty, you feeling alone. That is a feeling that many artists feel, even if they have family in the area sometimes. It's just artists, people have to realize that artists are human beings. We have a mental state. Anything can happen because sometimes we're performing and people don't know that we're going through something. So I think it's a very important that having platforms like this, people like yourself, it's needed because to show people like, yeah, we have feelings, we have emotions, we have, we have shit, <laughs> we have shit yeah. going on of ourselves. And it's important for people to, to understand that. Instead of yeah. just say like, oh, you're Selena the dancer, you're Selena the instructor. No, you're Selena the person. And I think that's way yeah. more important. Um, and I think also I can say maybe Selena the plant lover, the plant mother. Yeah. I don't know. We can, <laughs> you know, you're keeping those, you and your boyfriend are keeping those plants alive and well. So I, I I'm definitely learning. Love that. I'm learning. I'm on that <laughs> learning process. He's great at it. <laughs> it's a journey. So now yeah. what I do, I, I love doing with this podcast is, um, always usually at the end, we always do a segment called the randoms, which is a few questions mm -hmm. that I have here kind of gets people understanding of kind of who you are, uh, within dance, but also outside of it. Um, okay. because I think it's also important for people to, you know, have some fun. So yeah. let me just throw my first question at you. So Selena, if you can eat anything right now, what would it be? I will eat my favorite tacos in the world. Ooh. <laughs> they are um, barbacoa tacos, but I used to yes. eat these tacos since I was, since I can remember. My mom said that I couldn't even like stand and I'd be like asking for a taco. And he would always <laughs> give me like free tacos because I would be late to school. So I always wanted the tacos. She would be like, go get one, but I was so tiny. But every time I go to my hometown, I go and see them and eat those tacos because they're just the best I've ever tried in my life. Mm. 
Yeah. Mm, okay. I could, I could see <laughs> like you just want to hop on a plane right now over there. Yes. So, yeah. <laughs> I love it. All right. This next one is going to be interesting because it deals with us as dancers. We're at socials, we're at performances, but socials specifically. Um, don't get me wrong. I love dancing with people. I also have pet peeves as well. So you got to let me know. What's a pet peeve of yours on the dance floor? Uh, I guess hygiene. I guess. I think. I know. Yeah, because, you know, we, we all sweat, you know? Like, it's this yes. is natural. We humans, we sweat. But we have to be responsible to, like, you know, be aware <sighs> of our smell, you know? So yes, because that part... That part. Listen, I, I've danced with people with hygiene issues and and have to be respectful and say it makes the song longer than it mm-hmm. is. And listen, mm-hmm. again, hygiene should just be a, a, a yeah. natural thing. Right. All right. Next and, question. Yeah. Uh, what were you going to say? No, I was just going to say, and that's just one thing, but let's keep going. <laughs> <laughs> yes. All right. But next question. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. All right. So next one is, is there anything you would improve about yourself? You would improve? Yeah. Um, everything. <laughs> I'm like, God, I need to keep improving. Um, but definitely, I would say my discipline mm. needs more work, to be honest. To be okay. honest, because... You know, I could be motivated and get work done. And then when I encounter myself with just the option of discipline, it's it's tough. And, you know, I'm like slowly getting back on that track again, because I feel mm-hmm. like it's always a wave, you know, and it, it, it happens. We're artists, but at the same time, we're humans. Yeah. So I'm trying to find a balance where I can reflect on my emotions and you know feel what I have to feel but at the same time not let that affect my work and my you know to continue and stay disciplined let's say going and working out and doing what I have to get done and just trying to find the time to do it because it's so easy for you to focus on you know you have to go teach as a dancer Mm -hmm. you have to go teach you have to go rehearse you have to work out too because you can get injured if you don't work out and you only dance. Like that's also, you know, a thing. Um, and I also trying to have a life. Like I want to also be with my boyfriend and mm-hmm. it's just a lot. And I also want to be human. So it's like just yeah. organizing it and trying to fit everything in my schedule. But hey. definitely that needs improvement. <laughs> okay. I appreciate that. All right. Next one. This should be interesting. What is, or do you, what's your routine before a show? Because some people, they meditate. Some people, they listen to some music. Is there anything you kind of do um, that is routine kind of during or before actually a show? I would call it breathing meditation. Like, mm-hmm. I really like to get into my breathing. And that's something that I got to lately because I um, I realized my chiropractor, when I went to him, the first time he was like, I don't think you know how to breathe properly. <laughs> and I'm like, what do you mean? What I'm still mean? here. What do you mean? I'm, yeah, I'm still, still living. I'm a, from an athlete, I was a dancer and I, I need the breathing, you know, but yeah. it makes sense the way he was mentioning it and how I was doing it. And once he taught me how to actually do it, I was like, wow. So actually, there wasn't a lot of oxygen going to my brain in the way that I was breathing. Mm. So that was like a mind-blowing thing. So since then, I've been like working on my breathing, and it actually makes me feel relaxed. Because usually, I'm always going to feel nervous, you know, before a performance. But Mm -hmm. breathing makes me just, it's like taking a chill pill. (laughs) <laughs> you know, like you're just more relaxed, listen to the song, mm-hmm. um, going over it on my head, uh, obviously stretching, warming up, and just doing a little bit of um cardio because yeah. it's like the routine, for example, with Hunter, it just goes like it's fast. Yeah. So for you to like let your body get into that shock of like mm-hmm. just go, go, go. 
Like I need to get my heartbeat up at least right before performance. And that's when I, you know, I try to always have, get there with time so I can like go over th these things. But, you know, I've been in times and like Congresses that we're running from, I don't know, tech and we gotta go put our makeup on and just change it. Now we don't got time, now we gotta be on stage. So there has been moments that I haven't been able to go through my routine and it's just, it's still possible to get through it, but it's like a little bit more draining than oh. actually giving yourself the time to prepare to be on stage. Absolutely. I definitely but, agree. Yeah. I think I would say it's similar to like a car. You always have to warm it up before mm -hmm. you go into drive. So mm -hmm. I definitely understand that. All right. Our second to last question. This should be interesting. So right now I'm giving you the power. You're right now at your favorite Congress event, social, whatever. And as the promoter, I say, Selena, you get to choose the one performance that you want to see, who is it? Oh, man. But, uh, yeah, the South has seen it. Could, it, could be, it could, yeah, it could be any performance right now. They say, hey, we're going to bring them right now just for you, and you can watch them. Who is it? Like you're saying, like performance, like from the scene, right? From the salsa scene. It, it could be or salsa scene, anything. A whole world. I guess I'll have. Oh, this is a hard question. I don't know. I have so many, so many in my mind, but I don't know which one could be the best. I guess, like Rihanna's Fenty show. <laughs> okay, hey, hey, listen, I appreciate it because so many people just go really back into dance, but hey, the Savage Fenty I show like, by Rihanna. Yeah, I'm mean, like, yeah, that was a dope one. I admire okay. everybody in there. Yeah, but there's, there's more, definitely. But at and least that one is the one that comes to mind. Yeah, I guess, yeah, yeah. Okay, all right. Yeah. Well, now it brings us to my last question. And this one should be interesting. So many people know that you dance. Many people mm -hmm. kind of, under if they know you, you know, they, they know little things about you. But what is something that people may not know about Selena? My first name. <laughs> really? <laughs> Wait, so Selena is not your first name? No. <laughs> oh, I mean, is, is there a way we can? What, what do you mind, or do you mind me asking what your first name is? Sure, I can answer that question. My <laughs> first name is Genesis, or in Spanish, Genesis. <laughs> oh, Genesis, yes. Wait, wow. Mm -hmm. So, was this like a professional type of change or was like well, what Selena is my middle name gotcha. um so it's uh when I started in the scene as an artist then I was like okay Selena is my artist name okay so that's when I like left the genesis for my friends and family in Mexico gotcha. and then I put the Selena and now everybody was calling me Selena and I was like I connected to it because I felt like I was able to be independent and I was a new mm. new person, you know? So I left Genesis in Mexico, Genesis in Mexico, <laughs> and I came to New York being a Selena, okay? Oh, my God. Well, so listen, people, I have to tell you, that does not mean <laughs> that you should be calling her Genesis. Sí, Not, no. As for friends and family, you are she is still Selena. So okay. let's keep it there. Listen, I appreciate you even giving me yeah. that because I never knew that, but I thank you. And yeah, I also the friends be like, You lie to me all these years. I'm like, it's something Sorry. special. Listen, <laughs> listen, I feel special knowing that. And I thank you again for doing this segment. This is why I do yeah. it. It gives people like a little bit more insight into who you are as yeah. a person. So I you appreciate made, you, that. You made my brain work. Yes. <laughs> I'm like, but <laughs> <laughs> And, you know, honestly, again, having these conversations <laughs> with people like yourself is needed. And I think it helps yeah. us transition now because we are at the conclusion of our talk. And, and I tell many people when I have these discussions, this is not just like a one-off. For me, um, 
I always use these discussions in fervor um, to have more discussions and get a little more in detail and a little more understanding of you. And as we talked as well, then bringing this type of platform into more of a public space with us, like face to face, because I think that's yeah. even more more personal. And mm-hmm. but at least before we really end and conclude, I really want to say from beginning to end, um, I've really appreciated our dialogue because I think it's needed. As we've talked as well in our scene, it's kind of like hi bye. Or hi, let's mm-hmm. dance. I'll see you later. So kind of having these moments of like, okay, there's no music, uh, there's no performances, there's just us. I think is, right. is amazing because again, many times you won't even get to have these conversations because even when we try, there's always the hey, let's dance, or somebody will grab you. And I tell people, have respect. If somebody's having mm-hmm. a conversation, don't just be grabbing people. I mean, that part. yes, <laughs> definitely. This is something that I want to bring in class. Like, we need to teach our students how to even ask someone to how to dance. Like, you need to know, you know, you, it needs to be part of the class consent and all of these tools. Like, we definitely need it in the class. Absolutely. And it's this is amazing that you're doing this because, you know, how you said, um, we're always connected with dance but we Mm -hmm. never really get to know each other like that or or the stories and the backgrounds of everybody so I am really grateful that you have me here because I know a lot of people don't really know where I come from or Mm -hmm. what my training was like so they only saw one part of me but you know I used to do a lot of different styles not only salsa and it's just so dope that I can, I'm going to be going in those videos and I'm going to see these artists that you spoke to because I honestly want to know more about them because yeah. I feel like I know them, but I don't mm-hmm. really know them. You know, like now I feel like now I'm going to get to know you more. Yeah. <laughs> you know? And listen, so. that, that's the beauty of it because for me, I'll tell you this lastly, was doing this um, platforms because during COVID, I realized there were artists that, left the scene completely and their stories were never told right or right. they they came back in a different capacity even less mm-hmm. performing even less social dancing or just less of a, appearing at events in, in general so for me it was like you know what before that could ever happen again be able to share people's stories from people like yourself but through your mouth through your lens yes. because yes. i i tell everybody i can't tell someone's story for them I want them to be able to, but at least be in a comfortable setting and mm-hmm. not, because also I say too, when I'm talking to these artists that you know of, I'm coming from that understanding of, I know what it's like. Mm-hmm. I'm not just some person with a camera and a mic and say, talk to me. I've been on the same stages. I've social danced with many of you. I've had simple conversations, but I also want artists like yourself to know that a person like me cares mm-hmm. because it's a lot. It's a lot more than just saying, oh, hey, Selena, just tell me about yourself. Cool. I saw a video. Just tell me. Tell me what you like people to hear. Like, no, I'm going right. to, I want people to hear what they need to hear. Exactly. So then at least years later down the road, they can't say, I don't know anything about Selena. No, I'm mm. giving, I'm, I'm taking that excuse out and I'm telling people, you're going to know who Selena is. You're going to know where she came from. And I'm, and I, I just want people, like you said, seeing now you're you're going to be able to look at interviews from the past and like learn a little bit more about people you knew. Yes, yes, and, and I'm I'm excited to do so. This is beautiful, Simon. Thank uh, you, really. No, of course, of course. And again, like doing this podcast, it means a lot. I'm excited for um, what you have coming up in the future, yes. and I definitely look and look forward to catching up with you as well during this year. And again, I appreciate you doing this. I appreciate everything, but at least before we go, I would love to know if you have any last few words for myself and the audience. Yes. Well, one thing that it keeps bumping in my head is that I didn't really get to say all the highlights from New York no, of from course. my performances. So I'm just going to mention the one yes, that, I, absolutely. that I missed. So after Fuerza, my highlight, my next highlight was debuting with um Iroko Mm. so I was able to debut the first routine that they made in New York and train with them and my other highlight was definitely obviously New York movement Mm -hmm. and competing with them 
Uh, oh, a whole different feeling. It was just a such a powerful moment. Um, and in the height, in the height, yes, the girl. Movie, was the highlight of the highlight of the highlight like it was just amazing it wasn't even part of my goals really like i didn't mm -hmm. really think it was even something possible you know so that was wow like a gift for me and of course recently with latin soul dancers i always since i saw adolfo from mexico i wanted to train with him sometimes i even wanted to like move to italy to even be able to experience the training with him mm -hmm. and having him in new york i was like oh my god i need to i need to get back to new york and i came back <laughs> and i trained and i was like yes yes i'm doing what i said okay let's go so that's another highlight for sure but i just wanted to share that real quick because i forgot uh mm -hmm. or i just i guess we just started speaking about something else and yeah i completely didn't complete that part but mm -hmm. yeah just wanted to say that um and in terms of the other questions or options to share i would say when are we doing an interview for you listen <laughs> We want to know about Diamond now. <laughs> Listen, you let me know. I got, I have so many stories to share, but you know what it is for me? It's like being 32 now, and we've talked. I think it, I, I felt like you were shocked when you found out that I've been dancing since like 96. And I, I for me, uh, I take it as a blessing because, I mean, there's so many dancers that I've known of that are no longer here in the same capacity. Um but to see the new generation of dancers like yourself over the past 10 years. And I think even you, like you coming to New York, I think the people from 2013, not a lot of people. There's a, there's a, there's a whole brand new generation of dancers yeah. coming. And I, I think for me, um, being able to connect with artists like yourself is so special because again, we, we live in New York city where it is rough, where it is tough, mm -hmm. um, where it's like, what have you done for me lately type of attitude. And for me, I've always said, I'm not going to do that. I can't because I've had those conversations in dance sport backstage with some of y'all like, yo, how are you doing as a person? Mm. Like, fuck the dancing, fuck this performance. Like, what are you doing? How are you? Because I realize that's something, a simple question like that gets overlooked constantly. And for me, I've had people ask me, when am I going to inter be interviewed? Listen, I'm yeah. down anytime, any place, anywhere. Any questions you want to ask, <laughs> anything you want to know, that's, I'm down to do it. And right. again, this is, this is why I do this, because I, I want to be able to have people like you share your journey with others, because you never know who you're inspiring. You, you never know right. who you're helping give that little extra push to. And um, again, this is why I do it. I'm, I'm excited and I'm definitely looking forward to another conversation with you, another dialogue. And trust me, our next dialogue, you can ask me anything you want. Anything. I'm going to get ready. <laughs> Please. <laughs> yeah. Listen. And listen, again, here at the Let's Discuss with Diamond podcast, we fully, fully, fully support people and artists like yourself. And again, from one artist to another, thank you for everything that you do, because I know what it takes. I know the long hours of rehearsal. I know the the pain in the knees and the back. And yeah, I, I know what it feels like. And again, um, the sacrifices that we all make sometimes for family, for ourselves, for the betterment of the community. So again, thank you. Uh, I appreciate yeah. this. And Everyone who will be listening, uh, this episode will be on Spotify, Google, Apple Podcasts, YouTube, Facebook, and more. Um, and this has been a very, very special episode of the Less Discussed with Diamond podcast with myself, Diamond, and the one and only Selena Tornez. Hey. Uh, so thank you, everyone, for tuning in. <laughs> who will be tuning in? We'll see you soon. Everyone, peace. <laughs>